Welcome to Social Allo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. Can the Lord talk to you? And before you actually answer the question, think carefully. When I say if the Lord can talk to you, yes, he can. He can reach out to you in whichever way he wants. But an important question is, do you actually want to hear from the Lord? There are some people, for example, they know someone with the gift of prophecy or someone who is actually a prophet, and they will continually seek the person out because they're trying to get information regarding their lives about messages from the Lord. But rather than seeking the Lord for themselves, they prefer to go to a person. Rather than reading the Bible for themselves, they prefer to listen to a sermon from a pastor, for example. So again, can the Lord talk to you? Or does that to speak to you through someone else? We have an opportunity to have a personal relationship with God through His Son, Christ, who when He died, was resurrected, and He ascended into heaven, He sent His Holy Spirit. And that opened the doors for us to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Each person to be able to hear from the Lord for him or herself. But sadly, many people have given up on this relationship or not even tried to nurture that personal relationship. They prefer to hear from someone else who is speaking apparently on behalf of the Lord. But that's not always the case. When you rely on a person to inquire for the Lord for you and then to give you an answer, you are asking for a message from the Lord or allegedly from the Lord that has to go through an imperfect filter. And if that person has hidden agendas, that could affect the message you receive or if you receive the message at all. In Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah speaks about how the word of the Lord is like fire shut up in his bones and he can't even hold on to it. He must speak what the Lord says. Yes, that is true. Oftentimes in the Bible, you'll see a prophet writes about, and the word of the Lord came to me. It happens like that. But many people, especially nowadays, after the fulfillment of Joel 2, 28 and 29, as written in Acts 2, and I'll get into that a little bit later, we have an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so we truly can hear from the Lord. But again, are you listening? Do you actually want to hear from the Lord? Or do you prefer to go to someone else to hear from the Lord for you? So like I mentioned, Jeremiah, the word of the Lord being shut up in his bones like fire and he had to speak it. That's not always the case. And we see that in Jonah. The Lord told Jonah to go to Nineveh. So he had a word from the Lord to tell the Ninevites. But Jonah actually went in the opposite direction, or at least he tried to go to Tarshish. So he had a word from the Lord for the Ninevites, but basically he refused to give them to him or give it to them. So just imagine if someone actually has a word from the Lord for you, but that person is in disobedience and is putting your life, your future on the line, possibly on hold because of possibly malicious agenda or just being flat out disobedient. In some cases, a message that a person receives on, from the Lord for you may not be a message that person may like. For example, you may have a pastor, and a pastor receives a message from the Lord to tell you that he, the Lord, is about to release you into a ministry, and that ministry is going to far or reach a greater magnitude of people than the ministry that you're in right now. Your pastor could be jealous and not want to share that information with you. So in a sense, you're kind of flying blind. And if you only want your relationship with the Lord to be through another person, you may end up missing out. Of course, the Lord had many messengers. In the same way he was a donkey to speak with Balaam in Numbers 23, he can use anything to convey that message to you. But it goes back to who do you want to be your filter? Do you want to have a personal relationship with the Lord where you can hear from him? Or do you want to rely on others people who are fallible, and some people who are malicious to convey information to you. And I'll start with Exodus 20, 18 through 21. And it's an opportunity that a lot of us have today to hear from the Lord ourselves. And many people have chosen
to be like Israelites. So, for correction, um, Exodus 20, 18 through 21. And all the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak to us, lest we die. If any of you have ever heard the voice of the Lord, and not in a harsh rebuke from him, but the voice of the Lord, it is not something that instills fear. At least in that kind of fear, it will give you a sense of peace. But the choices, like with the Israelites, they could choose to hear from the Lord themselves, or they could choose a person to hear from the Lord for them. And they chose Moses. Now the voice of the Lord they heard was a frightful thing, and it continues. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, for God is come to prove you, and that his fear may be before you, before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. A lot of times, that's what it comes to as far as being able to hear the Lord's voice. Are you willing to have a relationship with Him? Now, the voice that the Lord has not spoken in that scripture, it was loud. They heard thunder and lightning. And we see an example of this when Jesus was baptized. Some people heard him say that Jesus was his son, and others just heard thunder and lightning. So a lot of times, what you're willing to hear is what you'll hear from the Lord. But when they heard from the Lord, they had that fear in them, and they stood off. What happens sometimes is many people have that ability to hear from the Lord, but they're not willing to spend time with him listening in worship, receiving the messages that he has to proclaim. The key difference between Moses and the rest of the Israelites was when they were drawn away from the Lord, he pulled closer to him. He was willing to have a relationship with the Lord. And this was around Mount Sinai. So Moses was willing to spend time with the Lord and also to hear from the Lord. And one of the reasons why the Lord has, Lord has prophets today is that they are the ones who are willing to convey messages from the Lord. They may not always be ear tickling messages. In some cases, they'll be frightening messages, such as repent. When John the Baptist emerged on the scene, he emerged out of the wilderness, a voice clearing the way for Jesus. He was telling people to repent because the kingdom of hand is at hand, or the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Many people can't do that. Which is one of those reasons why there aren't as many prophetic voices as there could be. But we all have the ability to hear from the Lord. And a lot of times, it's if we want to. Some people don't want to hear from the Lord because, for example, the Lord will correct an individual individually. And sometimes people are afraid to come close to the Lord because their sins are going to be exposed. Jesus came into the world and he is the light. When you come into the light, the things that are in darkness are going to be exposed. But a lot of people want to keep in the dark. So they'll approach someone who they know is a prophet or has a gift of prophecy and ask the person to inquire of the Lord and then hope that the person doesn't come back with a message saying, you need to repent of this. And that'll be, in a sense, an ear-tickling message. And I could get into deception, but I, I won't. So are you willing to hear from the Lord? In other cases, it is because, for example... A, the Lord may speak to a person in a dream, similar to back in um, Jacob's time. The Lord told Jacob many things in dreams. And even when Jesus was born, an angel of the Lord spoke with Joseph to let him know to take the baby Jesus, Mary, and they should move to Egypt because King Herod was seeking to kill them. And they should stay there until he spoke with them to let them know to return. As a result of that, it saved their lives. 
There are many of you who have had dreams from the Lord. You actually saw it come to pass. And in some cases, you told someone about a dream and the person talked you out of it and saying, now nah, that wasn't from the Lord. That was only a coincidence. And because of that, maybe you don't have as many dreams as you used to. One of the ways to let the Lord know that you want to hear more from him is by spending time with him. And when he shares information with you, it's also good to write the information down. A lot of what's in the Bible is because people wrote things down. Because initially, things were said, they were said orally. So a lot of things were stories that were conveyed orally, and at some point in time, they were written down. But in modern times, just think about this. If the Lord has been given a lot of dreams and you see things coming to pass, take the time to write those things down because it communicates to the Lord that you're interested in what he has to say. And the more he'll, if he gives you a little and you start writing it down, showing interest, let him know that you will to spend time with him. And if he gives you something, you're going to nurture it. You're going to be a good steward of it. He will give you more. So those are ways of fostering communications between you and the Lord. So again, back in Exodus 20, the people had an opportunity to hear from the Lord themselves, but they chose to have Moses be the prophet. In Numbers 11, we see um, a little bit different take. And Moses, even though he was a prophet, a prophet who signs and wonders followed. He was the one who parted the Red Sea. Of course, the Lord is behind him and actually told him to do it because he was willing to spend time with God. So in Numbers 11, and I'll read verses 24 through 30. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them around the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So once the spirit of the Lord was placed on those individuals, they started prophesying, just like Moses. You have that gift within you. If you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit within you. So you have the ability to prophesy, and to prophesy is to convey the things that are in the heart and mind of God, and sometimes to yourself and also to others. But if you're not listening to the Lord, you're going to miss those messages. And sometimes you will get those messages, but you don't proclaim them, and you may not receive as many messages as before. So again, the Lord placed the spirit that was on Moses and dispersed it among 70, and they start prophesying too, just like Moses. But there remained twelve men in the camp, and the name of one was Eldad, and the name of the other Medad. And the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out to the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. So toward those men, even though they weren't close to the other sixty-eight who had received the Spirit of the Lord, they received the two because they were identified as those who would have received the Spirit. So by accepting Christ, you have the same spirit in you to be able to do similar things. And the young and there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medab do prophesy in the camp. Sometimes you start speaking word of the Lord and people want to shut you down. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord, Moses, forbid them. <laughs> so you know young Joshua wanted to forbid people from speaking on behalf of the Lord. And if you're a prophet or you have a gift of prophecy, you may have experienced it, and especially if you're in a church where the pastor does not believe in prophesying, even if you get unctioned by the Lord, that person will shut you down. So kind of what I mentioned about Jeremiah and Jonah, yes, the Lord may put things in us for us to say, and sometimes we have a choice if we want to say it or not. And there are times when people can shut you down because they're in a position of authority. And in a sense, they quench or quell the Holy Spirit. Not a good thing. And Moses said unto him, 
envious thou for my sake? Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets? Wow. Numbers 12 speaks about Moses being the most humble man on the face of the earth. There are many people who are prophets or they have the gift of prophecies, prophecy and they want you to be dependent on them for a word from the Lord. They won't even tell you to read the Bible because that is a true word from the Lord and the Lord can speak to you that way. It's like they want you to come to them almost like in an idolatrous sense. But here you have Moses. He was so humble that he said, Would God that all the Lord's people were prophets. Those of you who are prophets or you have the gift of prophecy, you know there are times when the things you're saying are from the Lord. But then there are times when you may speak naturally and the Lord will speak through you and you won't even know it. So Moses was talking about wish that all the Lord's people were prophets. And what he said would later be reflected in Joel 2, 28 and 29. So he was being prophetic without even knowing it. And I'll continue. And that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Something else, also reflected in Joel 2, 28, 29. And Moses got him into the camp, and he and the elders of Israel. So at one point, the Israelites wanted Moses to be the only one who basically heard from the Lord. And Moses' um, brother, Aaron, and his sister, Miriam, were also prophets. So they heard from the Lord. And this is reflected in Numbers 12. So the Lord had 70 more people in addition to Moses who had the ability to prophesy, to declare things from him in his name to his people. And it continues in Acts 2, 14 through 21. But Peter, standing up, and to set the stage for this, this is the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit of the Lord, as promised by Jesus, descended on the earth. And people heard the apostles speaking in tongues, languages, and they thought they were drunk. So in verse 14, But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, actually nine o'clock in the morning, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Again, Joel 2.28, or Joel 2, verse um, 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall have or shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants... And on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, excuse me, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now you had even more men who could hear from the Lord based on having the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit did not depart after the infilling of those apostles on that day. And throughout Acts of the Apostles, we see where people laid hand on others and transfer the Holy Spirit by accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're presented with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit Himself gives us gifts as He will. For example, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, prophecy, healing, miracles, interpretation of tongues, speaking tongues, and the gift of faith. But we have to be willing, well, first, accepting Christ as our Lord and Savior. But even with those gifts, we have to exercise those gifts by putting them to use. If we're Christians and we don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit, we may have them, 
but they may remain dormant. Because if, for example, the Lord keeps on communicating things to you and you truly don't hear him, then he's probably going to speak to you less. Or there may be times when he's speaking to you just as frequently, but your ears, your spiritual ears, have become hardened to his voice. And a lot of times, some of you have gifts. Some of you are prophets, seers, psalmists. But because of the church you're in, you're relying on the things that you're your pastor has to say and it may seem good but you're like the Israelites who didn't want to hear from God for yourself so you wanted a Moses to hear from God for you and like I said Jonah had a word for the people of Nineveh but he chose to run in the opposite direction he was disobedient now he eventually went to Nineveh but you don't want someone to have a word from you and not want to give to you in some cases, a lot of you in churches for quite a while, and your pastor may know exactly what the Lord has called you to do. In some cases, the Lord has told the pastor to prepare you and release you into your calling. But like Jonah, the pastor kind of went in the opposite direction, and it caused delays. In some cases, you should have moved out of church a long time ago. In other cases, if you, for example, you've been called to be an evangelist, you should have been kind of out on the road ministering to people and in some cases pointing those people back to your home church but because that pastor is keeping you housed in and you may not hear from the Lord yourself the pastor has a word for you or someone else does but the person isn't giving it to you then you're missing out and the work that you truly been called to do is not getting done but it's not really about work it's about having a relationship with God. So again, can the Lord talk to you? But let me be fear and warn you. Time is an earthly thing. A lot of times when the Lord wants to speak with you, it may be at 3 o'clock in the morning. Are you willing to get up to hear the Lord? When I mentioned about dreams and recording them earlier, if the Lord gives you a dream at 1 o'clock, are you willing to get up and write that dream down and ask the Holy Spirit for an interpretation of that dream so you'll have an answer? Or will you have the dream? Say, okay, and just go back to sleep. Because a lot of times with a dream, the longer you wait to write it down, it's like being written in disappearing ink. The longer you take, the less information you're going to recall, and you may miss something critical. If you're called to be an intercessor, the Lord may wake you up at 3 o'clock in the morning. To pray for someone, maybe someone you don't even know. You may have had a dream and you saw the person's face and you just know to pray for the individual. Are you willing to do that? I'm going to let you know, having a relationship with the Lord is not easy. It involves sacrifices. But which relationship does not involve sacrifices? You have an opportunity, if you haven't done so already, to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior and to have that relationship with the Lord. But the choice is yours regarding if the Lord can talk to you.